to thank the choir so much for that song. I think some time ago I'd asked them to try to play to it. And they did. And I discovered that the song chosen, the same song, coincides with what we are going to speak about. I did not tell her what I'm going to be speaking about, but it happened. The Bible talks about symbols. It talks a lot about symbols. And when it comes to the communion service, we talk about symbols, representations, things that represent something significant, things that point forward, things that point backwards, things that tell us of the present situation. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Verse 23, it's a well-known text. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks he break it I wanted to note that word hence the song he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken look at that word again which is broken. Oh. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Broken symbols. The symbols that Jesus Christ used to describe the great reality of impending crucifixion were symbols that were broken. Broken to represent four significant truths that should have tremendous impact on each one of us today. I'm going to point out four, using the word broken. Firstly, a broken world. When God created the world, he created a perfect world. There was no sin, no pain, no heartache, no foul ear. Everything was good. For in time of creation, God, when he created his, when, when he was finished, he created his, and it was good. And if God says something is good, it's good. <laughs> if God says it's good for man not to be, to, to be alone, it's good. <laughs> so he made him somebody else. So if God says that it is good, it is good. The soil was rich. There were no tornadoes. There were no hurricanes. There were no earthquakes. There was no cigarette smoke in the air. Everything was fine and lovely for man. What a God we serve. God made man and he gave him an environment that was custom made. Clean air, 
Water was wonderful, no, no chlorine in the water. <laughs> Flawless vegetation and an absolutely perfect atmosphere. In the human realm, there was no disease, no sickness, and no death. God created humankind to be perfectly healthy in every respect. Morally, there was no animosity, no rebellion, no racism, no division in any way. But when the first couple rebelled against God by sinning, God's perfect creation was broken. Every part of it was broken. The natural part, the human part, the animal part, the animal world, and the moral realms of creation were all affected by man's sin. Everything was messed up. If you want to read what, what Romans 5.12 said, you'll get a good picture there. Adam's sin broke the world. God had given Adam dominion over the entire creation. I can now understand why some folks can deal with lions. I saw a man lying down with a lion. I saw a man mixing closely with a tiger. At creation, the tiger was not a problem. The lion was not a problem to man. God had given man dominion over these animals. But with the entrance of sin, hey, trouble. No red ants. You do know red ants, some of you? Huh. Terrible fellow. No centipede. Biting anybody. When I was on vacation the other day, I, 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 I lifted up the sheet. Apparently nobody had stayed in the house for several weeks. As far as I was concerned, the windows were, were closed or the louvers were closed, but somehow centipedes still got in the house. And they're so smart that they crawl up underneath the sheet. <laughs> At creation, man didn't have to worry about this. Now, some of you understand what I mean, centipedes? Dangerous, well. Cockroaches? They come from all over the place. No, they are, less, they are like pests, they are painful, they are disgusting, and so on. I thank my God that, <coughs> that when Jesus Christ comes back, Amen. these things will, be, will not bother us. Yes. I don't want to say that they will not be around. <laughs> the scorpion will lose his sting. <laughs> Because God is going to make all things Amen. new, beautiful. And so, Adam's sin broke the world. So here today, Jesus' celebration of the Lord's Supper was looking forward to the day 
when God's broken world will be reconciled with God. Amen. Today, the communion service is pointing us to a time when God is going to reconcile us back to himself. The broken symbols that we partake of are a reminder of the broken world in which we live. And with Jesus Christ came to heal. They are a picture of the certain hope of the world that will fully be restored. And within which we will dwell eternally. So we talk about broken world. When Adam sinned, the world is broken, messed up. It's not what God wanted, but because of sin, it's messed up. You heard the other day that a young boy at school, right in the classroom, took a knife and stabbed the teacher in the presence of other students. It's a broken world. A broken world. And Jesus Christ is going to come back to put it together again. Amen. These symbols also represent a broken life. Firstly, I said a broken, a broken what? world. Secondly, a broken life. As Jesus broke bread and distributed it to his disciples. He had in the mind, he had in the mind the broken lives of every man, woman, child, that would ever walk the face of the earth. He could look at us from the time of Adam down to all his descendants. And his heart was stirred with a desire for reconciliation and restoration. God's deepest desire is that the broken lives of today become the restored lives of tomorrow. When Jesus sees the brokenness of our souls and bodies, he's moved to compassion. Uh, Jesus' mission was directed toward the broken lives of this culture. The Lord's Supper distinctly represents the fullness of life that has been cherished or cleansed and renewed by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The elements are a constant reminder that he has come to restore our broken lives and make us whole again. Hi. That's what God wants to do. You see, I don't know if you have ever suffered from a broken heart. Has anybody ever broken your heart? Huh? Oh yeah? <laughs> a broken heart is the worst thing. It's worse than a broken foot. <laughs> when your heart is broken, you can't sleep. You sometimes feel like committing suicide. And I've seen others whose hearts were broken, had to stop one young man from going to the river to kill himself because the girlfriend that he had said, I love you no more. And his heart was broken. I could understand that. Brokenness is a terrible thing. And then I watched a lady that I used to see about and brought up a young girl, a young girl from the time she was about six weeks old. Brought up till she became a woman. And here was a lady dying and requested the presence of this same young lady, begging and beseeching for her to come and see her. But she come? She never came. 
and I watched the lady die of a broken heart. For me, that young lady was heartless. Then when, when after the lady died, she would call and say, Pastor Philip, I would like to know when the will is going to be read. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> See? I, I, I love you for what I hope to get. I don't care too much about you. The lady loved her, did all that she could to help her. And when this love should be reciprocated, it was not there. It even broke my heart. Broken, broken heart. Jesus Christ's mission was directed toward the broken lives of the culture of ours. And also the, his own culture. The elements are a constant reminder that he has come to restore our broken lives and make us whole again. Third, these symbols represent a broken body. Those near the cross could hear the dripping of his blood and see it form a dirty pool on the ground. They saw it trickle down his naked side and drip off his toes. They saw it oozing from the spikes to his wrists and ankles. They saw it gush in a sacrificial fountain when the spear was thrust into his side. The Lord's Supper represents the broken body of Jesus Christ on the cross where blood gushed out from his body blood on the ground and there he was a broken man body was broken for us the Lord's Supper represents the broken body of Jesus Christ on the cross it represents the agony and the pain but more than that, it represents the length to which God is willing to go to save us, Amen. to restore us, to reconcile us, to bring us back to himself. Yes. I'm willing to die for you, shed my blood for you, so that you could be where I am. Amen. Amen. I'll do anything for you. Sometimes in this world, some people make some promises. And when the time comes for them to deliver, they can't deliver. Promises are broken. But with Jesus, he has made a promise. He's going to keep his promise. Amen. I have shed my blood for you. Just like the people when they been to talk about marriage relationships and girlfriend and boyfriend, where some, some, some young men like to make some promises. <laughs> I will walk there for you. I will do this for you. And they told me that when he was going with a person and a dog came out, you see, I thought you would say you would go anywhere with me and for me. <laughs> see, but when I told him that no dog was involved, he ran for his life. Broken promises by human beings, but 
broken, as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, I'll die for you. I will keep my promise. And the only way that God could heal the broken world and our broken lives huh, was by coming to earth himself and taking punishment for sin in our place. Because of his great love for us, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came to earth to offer himself as a sacrifice of substitution. Came as a substitution. I should have been the one who died. But Jesus Christ took my place. Amen. Amen. I heard Pastor Lottie tell a story the other day about his son doing something that was wrong. And because he believes that he believes that you can, you can use the, the belt, he had the belt to give the child a few strokes in this country. <laughs> in this country where they say it is wrong. In this country, the Bible says that foolishness is wrapped up in the heart of a child and the rod will drive it far from them. In this country, the Bible still says it. But in this country, the government say no. Uh -huh. Well, he had his belt, <laughs> and the child was there, and his wife did not like the idea. So the wife came and put herself, his wife came and put herself between the child and him. <laughs> and she said to him, you're not going to be the child. You see, I'm going to do it. She said, I will take it for him. <laughs> so he says, stretch out your hand. <laughs> stretch your hand out. And he gave it a, a couple of them. <laughs> and then he stopped. He said, but come on. What foolishness am I doing? I'm beating my wife. <laughs> but here was a wife. Here was a mother willing to take some stripes for his son. I'm going to take it instead of you getting it. That was a sacrifice. Now, broken, broken, you have a broken heart, a broken spirit, broken body. Brokenness as I said, it's a terrible thing. And I do know here today that God wants us to return to a life of happiness, a life of joy. The communion service points us to the time when the body of Jesus Christ was broken for us. And our response to this is that we ourselves develop a love for Christ, that we can become broken and so subdued that the Spirit of Christ will saturate our beings, that we will not be the same. You come to the table of the Lord today and say, Lord, take me, mold me, and fashion me the way you want me to be. I must not leave the table of the Lord today a disgusted person, a disgusted man, a careless person, a wicked person. I must leave the table of the Lord today a better person. Amen. Why? Because Jesus Christ died to restore me. If I'm hurt in spirit, God can bring back restoration. If I am ashamed of life, God can bring back peace and joy and happiness to my life. Let the communion of service speak to your heart and my heart. And let Jesus Christ, the one whose blood was shed on the cross, take full control of our lives and that we will leave here today delivered 
reconciled to God. And so the choice is yours. The first feet washing ceremony is going to be the first thing. And so some people wondered why we have been a foot washing ceremony. For those of you who are not members of the church or who just became members of the church, the foot washing ceremony is important. You understand me? It is important. For when Jesus Christ instituted the last, the, the, the last supper, or the last supper, or the communion service, he actually, normally the custom was that when people came for supper, their feet will be washed. Feet will be washed first before they ate. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. And there, feet will be washed first as, as, as they arrived. Wash away the dust from their feet as they arrived. But Jesus Christ, after the people had arrived, and they were there and they were getting up to go eat. The Bible says, and he rose up, and he, as a servant, took a towel. Why did Jesus Christ do that? Because there was nobody else to do it. Nobody wanted to humble himself to do it. Uh, he, he behaved like a servant, and he did it, and he washed his disciples' feet. He humbled himself. This service also is a service of humility. So today, as we wash one another's feet, we are actually demonstrating to the world that we are humbling ourselves and following in the master's footsteps, doing what the master did and obeying him in everything. And so when you wash, you can come back now and eat the emblems of his broken body and of his spilled blood. And as far as I do know, if you are hungry today, I guarantee you that when you're finished eating and drinking the wine, you will not be hungry again. You will not be hungry immediately after. Yeah? It fills you, <laughs> makes you stronger, makes you steadier. Today, let there be a joy in your heart as you partake of the emblems of the broken body and of the spirit of Jesus Christ, so that when Jesus Christ comes back, Jesus Christ says, well, I'm happy about your behavior. Come into my joy of my Lord. And eat with me and sup with me, not for now, but forever. This is a foretaste of what is to come. And if you run from this, it means that you don't want to be with him then. So come and partake of the emblems of his broken body um, and his spirit blood. Go and be washed and come and partake of the emblems of his broken body and of his spirit blood. Go and come back. The Lord Accept me, forgive me, relieve me, deliver me, go and come back and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The song says, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left her crimson sin. He washes white as Ah. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. But Jesus Christ washes white as snow.